Yay, yay! Yes, where my yes. War, where my Warby Parker trial? Dot com slash sweat. Classes. Prescript. Per, show. Uh, sweatequitypodcast.com. Sweatequitypod.com. Sweat Equity Podcast and streaming show. It's Sweat have... Equity Podcast.com, too. Oh, yeah? yeah? We got a URL redirect? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah! I got a hard time about my URL. I know you need to get fired up. This audience needs to get fired up because we need to get a hotty toddy! Got him at it! Woo! Yeah! Hashtag Girth the Other Eye. Hashtag 69 B2B. Hashtag Sweat Equity. Hit us up. Five star review on Apple Podcast app, on iTunes, Spotify, Laughable, Your Mom's Walkman. We're on uh, YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, and LinkedIn, all those things. Whatever video stuff. Oh, Roku, too. Roku, yeah, but mm-hmm. that's that's too much work. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, Way too much work. This podcast, if you like this podcast, the best thing you can do is share it. Uh, tell a friend about it. Pause. Tell a friend, hey, I've got a, I've got a podcast. It's my little secret. It's my, it's my little secret for apps, for dick jokes, for pragmatic business advice, for pragmatic hustle. Pragmatic dick tech, apps. Yep. Yeah, for hustle, uh, motivation, all that stuff. And uh, that is the best way to, to help this podcast. The other way you can help is hitting our sponsors up. Try Give gra- me money. Try grasshopper.com forward slash sweat. It is a business phone line. Have an additional phone line. Don't have to carry around two phones like a drug dealer in the 90s. Try grasshopper.com slash sweat. Give me that business phone line. Gives you the hook of $150 off after you use that promo link. Try grasshopper.com slash sweat. Fresh books. You've got accounting to do. You've got invoices to send. You got some expenses to write off? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You need a skillable program to use? GoFreshBooks.com slash sweat. Super simplistic. I love it more than we were QuickBooks people. Now we're not. We are GoFreshBooks.com slash sweat people. Better than zero. Better than QuickBooks. Get a direct deposit next day, next business day. I can't emphasize that enough, how big that is. When you're doing your own thing and you don't have any outside capital, you got no cash flows, that next day, business next business day, direct deposit to you. Very nice. Go Fresh For Books. For young entrepreneurs. And you get $50 off if you use GoFreshBooks.com slash sweat. Lastly, how I started the show, Warby Parker, WarbyParkerTrial.com for your eyeglass, sunglass wear. WarbyParkerTrial.com forward slash sweat gets you five pairs to try on at home. See how they look. I was looking at some sunglasses the other day. Uh, they got aviators. They got my old uh, Sam Rothstein ones, the dude from Casino. Uh-huh. De Niro and Casino style glasses I used to have. Yeah. Uh, they have some on there. So they got really cool frames that you can't find anywhere else because they're not part of that corporate machine big eye glass. Yes. Uh, the monocle. Right. Orbyparkertrial.com slash sweat. Hooks the show up, hooks you up. Let's get going. What about my sweat equity? <laughs> I hit it. All right, we're going to part two the question we had from the last episode. I'll reread it, but before we get into that, okay, that's that's another. I'm I'm, te- I'm, I'm Johnny T's lately. Got it mentally marked. See, I'm teasing out. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm going to get my hair teased, like Dallas 80s hair. Okay. Big chick hair. Ah, yeah. Um, you were showing me an app. You're, you're studying for what again? Uh, the Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist exam. Yeah. Yeah. And I got an app called Brainscape that's uh, basically flashcards. Um, now, what I, I had to pay for the, my particular exam's flashcards, but... Oh, they already have them loaded. Well, I had to go through another thing that uses Brainscape as the app to get these flashcards. Okay. Um, what do you mean another thing? Another uh, ca- company. Okay. I forget what it was. It was just like so they a study exam help sort of thing. You know, for any exam, like these, there's companies that'll be like money back guarantee you pass. No, I, I just wanted to clarify that 
your test may be somewhere that you just need to buy from somewhere else. Yes. Like almost like a video game that has like you can buy this weapon in the game or whatever. Right. You you, know? you I don't know. I haven't you don't gotten have to into type it too them all much. In. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's what, the that's thing. It's not just an app that lets that oh, it's a flashcard app. You build them yourself. No, this is awesome. It does it has them all broken down by chapter and all that and then shows the flashcards comes up you hit tap it to hit, give you the answer and then it says rate how well you knew this gives you five answers like five choices for some reason i'm like yeah. uh you know three at most wouldn't you know, like, yeah but it keeps track of where you are if you mark it say a three it'll bring that one back more often oh. than it will ones that you mark a five that you know for sure but they'll still bring back those fives intermittently to remind you sort of thing. So you're giving yourself a quality score of how well you know it. Exactly. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And it hits you with more frequency, the less confident. It's like a confidence score. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's good. I mean, we'll find out if I pass the shit, but... <laughs> but stupid Part of me is like, I, I think I'd, if I was using flashcards, I think I'd have to write them out on index cards. But at the same time, I'd probably do... Both. I would probably have it on that and hand write it out because there's always like 15, 20 minutes you're waiting for something. You're at the doctor's or whatever. You're, you know, you're, yeah. you're in line at the grocery store, a long line. You might have a couple of minutes instead of like fucking around on Reddit. You yeah. Well, I mean, that. this was the first thing I found that I could do it on my phone. Right. You know, like I go to pick up my kid at school and there's a long car line. Oh, it's like God. I can't put, bring my laptop and like connect to the internet or anything, but I'll have my phone. But it doesn't, until I got this, I wasn't really able to study much as I'm bringing the printouts with me, which I had been doing, but that kind of hits a dead end. Yeah, one thing I've been doing in that same time management kind of respect, and this might help some people, because a lot of stuff I do is, uh, you know, it's on, uh, it's either a lot of like communicating with people via phone or it's, uh, or meetings or or it's everything's done on my computer, right? Yeah. And so when I used to be really like crazy strapped for time and I'd be in the car, I'd go, how far ahead can I get to do this thing before I do it? So for instance, I would be like, instead of going, all right, when I get home, knock out this Google ad campaign. But if I was in a drive for 20 minutes, i go, what could I, because there's a lot of stuff really you do before you actually you, you should really do before you even open the computer. Like mental prep like, sort of thing? Like, yeah, instead of just getting into it, planning it out for 10 minutes, instead of just getting into it, which is what I used to do. Yeah. You know? And then you kind of get mired in one area and forget. You, you can spend too much time focusing on the wrong thing within that project. Yeah, that's so, a good skill to have is being able to organize uh, preparation for things, just like what would help, will help you actually do this task. Yeah, you know. so I draw out like flow charts or I'll draw out like some some model that will make it easier for me to go, okay, when I get there, I'm going to get home in 30 minutes, but right now I can draw out this um, this campaign. Here's, all right, I'm going to, because what would I do normally? It's because I'm sitting in front of the computer doesn't mean I should just do that part, like the strategy part almost, yeah. without turning on anything. Yeah. On a piece of paper and go, okay, I know I'm going to do a campaign, a search campaign for this. I'll do image ad display campaign for this. We'll do a branded campaign and we'll do a retargeting. Those are the four. Okay. And I know from there, we're going to, all right, what are the locations? Okay. Try to remember what, you know, the client wanted here, here, here. And like almost doing that recall as much as you can before you get to it. Yeah. Don't put yourself in a box like, I need to have my laptop to do this work. It's I like, would do that all the time. Right. I, I still do it now a lot of the time. Well, everybody does it. You know, a little, a little break on yourself to be but, like, all right, I can't do it now, so I'm just going to chill out. But, of thing. but like, you know, use time wisely. Yeah. Like, driving is kind of the biggest time suck in a lot, of, a lot of ways. And if you can, you know, knock out something that might, you don't look, sometimes writing copy for me takes a long ass time. You yeah, know, like, that's hard, dude. And so if I can do it while I'm at a red light and go, come on, let's try, I'll talk to myself, go, try to think of a subject line for this email blast or, you know, try to, or right after I come from a meeting, you know, dictate notes yeah. uh, on the drive back, get used to that habit because it's going to be fleeting. And yeah. the further you get away from that meeting, the less you're going to remember. 
and if I don't know if you're like this, but for me, feeling like I'm getting ahead of something is motivational. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Like knowing that's like okay, I, I got that part knocked out. I can use that as momentum to to get going with it because that's a hard thing for people is get just getting started. is, oh. is a huge problem. Oh, I get a beefy business boner mm. if I'm just firing on all cylinders. Oh. I work. I get like an inertia. The more I can do and get successfully do, I should say, not just get it done with enough and then come back. I'll come back to that and yeah. Play, yeah. Like, really get stuff done consistently, and that snowball, it works in both ways for me, and it's not a good, ha- it's not a good, I, it, it's not the best behavioral thing, I would say, but I would say... If you can use it to your advantage. Right, right. When it's then, going well, yeah. I, it steamrolls, it like, it compounds, it, it, but it, it saves time, I'm not stressed, yeah. and I was telling someone the other day, the only way I, I don't get behind again is I just have to really make myself get ahead. And that means working Sundays uh, Mm -hmm. or getting up early. I worked late last night. Like, just get stuff done. Uh, I worked late on a Sunday night just so I could get, you know, get as far ahead as I can and get organized. Yeah. I mean, let's see. You got to trick yourself. Get all those documents in the neat desk uh, scanner. Just paid for a month of subscription. I have the scanner. I'm going to sell that scanner off. How's that work? It, it So it automatically, it'll do documents, receipts, and business cards. And it has like a little like uh, slit for all three. Mm-hmm. And then... It's at, weird you called it a slit and not a slot. Just, right? I don't know. Creepy. <laughs> slit. So you put it in all three gashes. Ugh. and uh, <laughs> Grossed out. So... Did you come in? It has three, three slits in it. Uh-huh. <laughs> And then the, the scanner, once it scans everything, it, it'll auto, it'll automatically detect, uh, you know, this is the first name, last name, email, uh, and it'll put it in a spreadsheet. For yeah, you. that's that's nice. So, but, I mean, they, did they send you the scanner, like, as part, because you said it's I like buy, a monthly I, thing? No, I bought it, I, a third of it, two or three years ago, I bought it then, I bought it used on eBay for, like, 150 bucks. Okay, so you buy the scanner separate, and you got to pay a subscription? Right. But, Sub? A sub. If if you only do it once, though, if you only if you can get all your documents like I'm doing right now, I'll go okay. This next thirty days, because I have the it's a thirty dollars subscription, right? Uh-huh. I'm gonna knock out every document I have that I've been waiting to, you know, in my file cabinet. I've been waiting to put in there, and I'm just gonna knock this shit out, and uh-huh. you know, spend a couple hours. You do it every ten minutes. You have to reload it, put stuff. So it's one of those like. All right, I'll do that while I'm cleaning the place. You but know? you can, you said every 10 minutes, so you can put a, a big stack of things in yeah, there. That's and yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's kind of the point, but you can't put too much in because the, right. the slits aren't big. Little enough. tiny slits in there. <laughs> and then there's like, you know, uh, business cards. Like we used to have the square ones that won't fit in there. So those you want to take on the app. <laughs> yeah. But like other than that, it's pretty good. And then you can. You can uh, classify each document by what it is. Is this a check? Is this a, a receipt? Is this an invoice? Is this tick pick? Yeah. Uh, is this just a document? It's a little tiny slip for that one. <laughs> is this a business card? So you can categorize it that way, and then you can export it all into an Excel so you can get it into your CRM. Okay. Yeah. So doing it in one fell swoop, what they want to get you on is having that thing all the time. I think after that, I'd use something like. Uh, Snap scan or uh, your Adobe account <laughs> that has um, <laughs> right, right. that has Adobe scan that'll do the same thing. But it, again, it's about being thoughtful right after the meeting, doing dictation of the meeting notes, post meeting notes, and then that kind of thing. Just the same thing. As soon as I at the end of the day, I need to like just make myself take five minutes, scan all the cards, all the notes I have. Dude, I mean, having, life's a lot easier. It's really, it's really or or morning the next convenient day. Convenient to have your documents, especially stuff that you got to reference all the time, like scanned in and on it, whether it's a Google Drive, you know. But then you can search, like if you have a Mac, you can search with the top right, uh, like the top right little search magnifying glass. But like just, you know, like my kid's birth certificates and stuff like that where it's like, I'm always having it. You, you think that you're only going to need it one time. You need all these things randomly all the time. And, and the stress that comes with trying to locate it huh. properly when it's not just scanned in, it, it's overwhelming. Honestly, I heard this from 
Bert Kreischer's wife, Lynn Kreischer, on uh, Christina P's podcast, Where My Mom's At, because mm-hmm. uh, I try to listen to be a better dad in a way, uh, since I'm doing the solo dad life half the week. I was trying to listen. I need to listen to kind of the mom side of stuff to see, you know, the, the stuff I'm lacking in. So I listen to that podcast for that. Uh, I can tell you what you're lacking in. <laughs> yeah, but on the on the on more of the femaleish kind of side. Okay, my know? wife can tell you what you're lacking in. <laughs> how do, I how do uh, but like that podcast is really great because they'll bring on like uh, the child therapist. Here's here's something how you talk about you know your privates and stuff, and here's here's a good way to do that. And right. I don't want to have to kind of theorize everything from whole cloth. If if there's some <laughs> better way to do it, I want to know. Okay. Um, or here, you know, potty training my girl is different than the dude, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's She's it's, easier, huh? Kind of, I guess. I, I think my daughter was easier. Well, they're, they're usually... I don't remember. They're so usu- far past it. They're usually more mature earlier, you know, per their age. But, yeah. But it, it's more about just like... Do you use toilet paper if you pee? I don't, I don't know. Like, those kind of things. Yes, that's that's an easy one. Tell her, yes. I, but the first time around, you don't know as a guy. Okay. I, I don't know. How do you know? <laughs> How? I thought, just, you just stop. You drip dry. Okay. I, dude, I don't, look. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. What? But what Leanne Kreischer was talking about was you've got to have the system. And that's the, that's the problem a lot of people don't have is, like, right when you get home, it needs to be right next to the door. You put it in an inbox or you put it in, you separate it, whatever. Whatever you're, you need a thing that is so, so. Uh, Autopilot. Yeah, just you could, I call it, do it uh, Mardi Gras drunk or Gasparilla drunk if you're in Tampa, where you could be blackout wasted, but you would still do here, keys go here. Yeah. I'm good. The keys thing, always been awesome about that. Yeah. Like keys go almost in the exact spot every time. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I know I'm not that good. Well, yeah, I mean, there's just so many things because the older you get, you're not getting a break. You, you're not, things aren't going to be, you're not going to have less stuff to worry about. You're just right. getting more stuff. So, like, you need to figure it out now, like, where these little things need to not be a problem. Those need to be on lockdown. So here, here's the thing I was going with. Uh, and then I would think about doing it so much that if I just did it, instead of the time all aggregated together thought of doing it, like, the file cabinet, mm-hmm. for instance, of kid stuff, or, you know, like, it would have been done, I would have had a system, but I overthought it instead of just going to do it, Yeah, you know, Yeah, and just refine as you go, but it's one of those things as, as the file cabinet, it's one of those dorky things you need to do as a dad, and pretty much as an adult, is like, A, you have to get a file cabinet, and here's something, pragmatic advice, it needs to be a fireproof one. Yeah, you can see mine right there, straight ahead. But they're fireproof. Yeah. So we have these wood cabinet. desks that are off camera that we've had. They're custom made. But I was like, is the file cabinet part is that is that fireproof? Absolutely not. I don't think so. So <laughs> those look like the most flammable desks you've ever seen in your life. Be- well, they were barn wood from like Kentucky or something. I know. And so, uh, and so, if anybody wants to buy them, I don't give a shit. So, the so what do you put in there? You put things that are like kind of light. Uh, light documents. You don't really need them. They're not super or stuff cool. that you might need in the short term. Right. You know that. You know, Easy I access. I know I'm going to need this. Yeah. Tomorrow, whatever. Here's a gift certificate. Boom. Like right, right there. Yeah. But it's not going to be like your social social security. Yeah. Card, exactly. Right? So things like that, where you have a system for that, right? Uh, and utilizing your space the best you can. But a lot of people don't know fire file cabinets need need to be fireproof. Yeah. Um, but if not, what's the point? I mean. Yeah, you can because there's just a lot now. They're just like it, but there. There's a lot that are like that desk, or they're just wooden. They look cool. I've seen so many like things on Reddit of people being like, "Here's why this safe sucks," and they how quickly you can break into these cheap safes. Yep. Like, dude, research those. Like, I, I think both of mine are Sentry safes, and they're you know just lock and key. They don't have any batteries or anything. But like, we you know, I've seen ones with batteries where it's like. Batteries. Immediately stop. Well, for like a keypad, I know, sort of I mean, thing. But it's like check the batteries every time. Every yeah, month. make sure you keep you know where that key is that unlocks it. It's like research your safe and for sure. and like we used to have for the doorknob with the touch with the touch finger part. I was like, I only want one where you can do a finger finger scan to open it if it has a key too. Yeah, 
Do not lose. Yeah, like, don't trust technology. Right. So we're not there yet. So the other part of getting organized with the neat scan is I I was like I need to figure out uh like my own I need to digitally organize. I need to have a, a system of how I organize files. If you go to uh, wearescout.com or friends over there, they actually have a good blog article about how to how you should uh, name all your files. Oh, okay. We're getting super dorky and nerdy. However, how much of your life do you want to keep looking for that file? Yeah. It's the same thing offline as it is online. It, it, and online might be even worse because it, you just put shit in one big folder and go, I'll yeah, I'll organize that hey, later. Even like you know, for you and I building websites and stuff, like file oh, names matter. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That that affects SEO like not a ton, but it, it can help. And we a learned that bit. from our our. I mean, you guys do video. You do video with our our late producer John Paul. May you rest in peace. Um, that, R.I.P. Big pun. Um, he's in Georgia so right now. Oh, he's alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What did you think? Oh, I don't know. I just didn't want anybody to get confused. Oh. Uh, but He's just dead to us. Right, he won't listen to this, so it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. So um, what I was saying is with y'all doing video when you shoot stuff, man, categorizing just that is like an eighth of the job. Oh, yeah. All yeah, the files organization. you have. Yeah, exactly. And then having a system. I remember walking at our friend's place, uh, the 2-8 Monkeys, where they had on the whiteboard just at the top that was always there <laughs> Here's an example of how every file needs to be categorized. Yes. Yeah. And I I, I need to read that article because I, I find myself doing it all the time. Their, their big thing was like put a, a date on it. Yeah. And so, but put the date this way. Put it uh, number dash. So like today's the 24th. Mm-hmm. So 2 dash 24 dash 20. Mm-hmm. And then I put the time on there because sometimes I make iterations and stuff. Yeah. So I'll put like 4, 4 p.m. Or yeah. You know, um, that was their big tip on there. But they have more, more I'm sure that's macro related that you can find stuff. Because you can tag, you can tag files without the name of it. Yeah. Without changing the name. Yeah. Which helps you on your computer, but like. Really, you should have it all in the file name, whatever information you need. That's uh, just that's safe. where I'm at too. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, it's one of those things that's the small stuff, right? This is the pragmatic stuff. This is the stuff that Eric and I are telling the audience that maybe younger or even older, but we we've been there. We've been we like there. this nerd shit. But we're no. been, we've been there, and we it's like just it. about, look, more masturbation time for you. How about that? Did you come in it? Think about it that way. You won't have time to. Cost benefit. You know? Come up with a system, and then you can come more. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All right, come yeah, let's, let's uh, let's forget our question. So back back to the part two. Thank you for coming today to talk to class. Blah blah blah. Um, you know, this was basically how can I find uh, how can I find a, a a job with a marketing firm, and, and I like the growth phase of everything. This is the question that came in. Basically, I'm not going to read the whole thing again. But the question that came in, I need, I'm going to find I need to find a job. I really want to work for a marketing firm. I have an undergrad degree that's business, business management. Right, which is good. I think that's honestly one of the better degrees to get undergrad because you can do a lot of shit with it. Exactly. You probably have the most options after that. Um, uh, entrepreneurship was mine. I, I feel the same. it's about the same thing. Um, but I, I learned how to write business plans in that, which you don't get in the management one. Yeah. But entrepreneurship, I had to take the management classes too. Yeah. On top of it. So yeah. A lot of these things, that, you know, that should be – a requisite for all degrees. It's like, unless you're going to be a teacher at that school or another school, you know, most of the time you're getting into a business. Yeah. It's very, like, my wife in dental school, they don't teach you, they get, like, an afternoon of business management tips, and that's oh, yeah. it. It's like, doc, like, it's internist like, doctors get, like, two hours of nutrition information. Yeah, so yeah. So it's like, my doctor said it's fine to eat this, and it's like, yeah, but he, he doesn't know. Yeah. But he's a doctor. He's my practitioner. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, hey, the hard part for my wife now is the business side of it. Like, she, the dentistry is, she's right. good. Right. Like, that, but like. Because she acquired the skill. Right. Mm-hmm. But the and business the side of it, is, all that stuff is, exactly. Mm-hmm. So here, here's the other part to that is we didn't, we talked about get a skill, get a marketable skill. I know Google ads back and forth. Boom. Uh, I know, um, I know how to write copy. Um, Photoshop. I I'm a badass Video cold editing. caller, you know. Yeah. Whatever, get some, and it needs to probably be a skill that you need to ball out on. That is entry level. That is 
associate level, whatever that, you know, uh, you're not going to come in and be a senior right away. Yeah. And so you need to come in and go, I, I can do this, this thing, just like we were talking about, uh, automatically do it as drunk as you, you can be with all your documents and stuff, have a system. You need to come in with a skill or three that has like, you know, that might be kind of shitty. That might be shitty, that, but you're going to be the fucking best at it. Right. And no one else wants to do them. Yeah. But the business needs it. Every well, it's like I was working for uh, Snap-on Tools, and it just so happened that I ended up being the guy that they sent to deal with the worst customers who were, like, ready to kill you. Yeah. Because I could calm them down and, and get on their side and kind of... Because you you're dead get on their side. Because I have no feelings. <laughs> no, but it was just like... I didn't want to do that. Like, that sucked. But, like, that business is a lot of alpha males who are going out and, you know. A lot of sales guys. Yeah, exactly. So, like, they needed somebody. Kind of guy. Right. They <laughs> need somebody to come in and be like, okay, man, just chill out and right. relax. Right. Uh, you know, like, that sort of thing where the bosses don't want to do it, you know, but they usually end up having to do it. If you can go in there with that sort of skill, like, that's what they want to hear. And then for your career, that creates more leverage down the line. The more skills you have like that that are so valuable uh, to the department or to the small business you're with, the better the better you position yourself for the next thing, either promoted within or you know finding the next job. But you know, uh, let's say like ten years ago, I learned how to do Facebook advertising. Mm-hmm. Then from to do Facebook advertising, I learned how to uh, code landing pages. Mm-hmm. Because when we do ads, they go to a landing page. So then I learned that skill. And I had to teach myself that around doing customer service work. Right. For, for the digital ads we were doing, the stuff we were selling. So during the day, I was doing that. And then I'd spend three or four hours a night learning Facebook advertising, learning, learning how to code websites from the ground up, um, and, then learn, and then getting advanced at that, right? And then over time, going, okay, now, now I need to learn Google. Now I need to learn this. And one thing I whiffed on that I would suggest is see how many certifications you can get online. Take take some online courses. Yeah, they're out there. Google get ads. Those. You, uh, you can do that on your own. It's not as hard as you think. They've made it a lot easier. Yeah. They uh, want you. To, they want more people with that out there. Yeah. The Facebook blueprint one is, I hear, a lot tougher. I've, I haven't done it yet. I, I regret not doing it. I should, I should have done it so I can just say, uh, you know, on that LinkedIn profile, hey, I'm certified. Yeah. Not a lot of people have that certification. I'm yeah. programmatic certified. I got that two years ago. Not a lot of people have that with the trade desk. There's only maybe a couple hundred people. Well, I mean, I think Google's the one to prioritize. If you're no, no, but I'm talking, something, that's but... more advanced. That's down yeah. the line. Uh, to, I think to get to programmatic, you should go through you know a Google certification. But that certification shows gumption. I, off the top of my head, I can tell you the digital ones. HubSpot has one. Hootsuite has one. Facebook, Google. Google has seven different ones you can take. Mm. Uh, YouTube advertising, uh, you know, e-commerce advertising, all that stuff. Display advertising. So they have seven courses you can take. For, they're all those are all free. HubSpot is free. Facebook, I think, is free. Hub, Hootsuite. Facebook has one that I thought was like very intense and not. Like, it, you it's have to intense. Go to a testing center. Or you have to take your webcam on your computer and show them the whole room. Yeah. Well, I'm out. I, I'm good with that. If it adds, I don't away. know how much value that has though, because yeah. I don't know how respected it is. That's the problem with digital is the yeah. people that are looking at that. Do, do they know? Like people don't know the trade desk programmatic certification. They don't know that's hard. They don't know what that is a lot of the time. Right. So it doesn't have that much value. You're almost better off accumulating all the easy ones and having a big long list. Correct, which is what I did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, hey, that's the smart thing so, to do. So once you have your, you, once you get into a level where you have the experience, you have some marketable skills and you have certifications, um, and those never stop, by the way. You should just keep always accumulating those. Think of them like Pokemon or whatever the yeah. fucking... I'm doing it right now. Right, right. You know? I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to take a HubSpot one just to have it. For fun. For fun. It, I, you need to challenge yourself, too, in another way. But I need to keep refresh on what's going on. Yeah. So the other part is, now now that's the part that you need. Now now you're kind of now let's look at the part where it's narrowing down what you where you want to work, right? Now you have choices. Before you didn't have choices. Now you have choices, right? And so 
now you have a couple things under your belt. Uh, you need to look at firms in a, in a couple of different ways. Uh, what is your, where do you work best? I'd say number one. Mm-hmm. People don't look at this. They're, they're going to go money first. And I go, I, I think you need to, uh, as an aggregate, where, where, you need to find out where you're at your best. I need to make it about this much money. It needs to be within here. Yeah, you don't want to drive an hour. Can I work from home right. or remote some of the time, all the time? If it's all the time remote, you know, you need to figure out if you're good. I'm not the best at working from home. I like to, I have to go other places to get out of my house to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just what I know about myself. I'm better if I'm at a, a co-share place at a desk or something. Yeah. And that goes back to priority one, figure yourself out. Right. Know where you're at your best kind of thing. And then um, where, and then when you're looking at, let's go with the marketing firm question is, does this firm focus in growth? Because that's what the question was. I like the growth phase. Great. Does this firm focus in growth? What's do they have a career track from entry level to the position you may want one day? Mm-hmm. Like I want to be creative director. Okay, you're going to be doing copy work. You're going to be copy editor for. Wow. Yeah. You're just going to do copy. You're going to sit in a room and just fucking do copy. That's all you do. Yeah. And so you better get good at that. But is there a track there? In five years, could I be? In ten years, could I be creative director? Mm-hmm. If I learn these other things along the way. Uh, that's something that you need to look at. Chick Fil A is the best example of that. That's why they rule. Promote from within. Right. They they ha- they have a whole track for you ready to go. Oh yeah. Yeah. They have they lay it out for you. That's, that's why cool. they won't say you're welcome, and they say my pleasure. That's how they get ten dollar an hour. Like that. They get ten dollar an hour people to say that, and that's why because they go I want to keep this job. Yeah. That's called motivation. They force you know? them to show how much their pleasure is. From the t- are the people that you know that work there, do they like it? Yeah, that's big. Um, do you think you'd work in a good environment like that? Some people like the go go stuff. Some people like a little bit of uh, casualness. I, you know, I thought I was a casual. I and I'm really more of uh, if I'm at work, I, I want to get it done. If I'm in an office, I want to just news flash yeah. asshole. I'm, the with, the same I'm way. working with a bunch of people that are relying on me. I'm next thing, next thing, next thing. Yeah, exactly. If I can make a 10-hour day into six hours, that's what I really want to do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It can be an intense six hours, but that's fine. I don't but, yeah, that's when you and I get together and it's like, we're just, <laughs> no breaks. Right. And then there's, Pussy. right. Well, there, but it, it, we feed off of that sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you burn out. You yeah. Know, too much of that's bad. Yeah. So all those things matter. Uh, benefits is the other part, too. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you might just need catastrophic health insurance. Are you going to pay for that on your own? Come be paid for it. Yeah. That's a big one. That is the, uh, I would say that is one of the biggest things that can hold people back from being entrepreneurial. Uh, yeah. Or, Scary. or risky. It, it's about mitigating risk. Yeah. Do you have any savings now too? Because maybe you're going to go somewhere. Maybe you're going to have choices between two places, but maybe just maybe that, uh, you know, you go to the riskier one, but you didn't have anything saved up, so you get stuck at the risky company that you're always fearful of. Yeah, and then it turns Getting out cut. that's not worth it. Right. So there's stuff like that, but really the biggest thing you need to do is I say do the research. If you want a marketing firm, I think I, I could probably, I, I could easily count 50 in the Tampa Bay area, right? Do you What sector do you want to be in? Yeah. General, you're going to do a bunch of different stuff at this firm. Are you going to be lifestyle kind of brands? Mm-hmm. Are you going to be B two B like I'm in? We're, we're working with manufacturers mm-hmm. and kind of really the unsexy supply chain people, mm-hmm. which I'm fine with. I love that because it's very brass tacks. Once you talk to them, they're like, "You're like, what are your sales? What is this? What is this? Where are your pain points?" Yeah, and that, they're ready to spend money. I, n- maybe not, but well, you at least won't have this fluff bullshit. Right. That I, I I get frustrated with. I said they at least know that they need something right. like right, that. right, 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 right. Um, and then, you know, uh, where can you add value and that kind of thing? Yeah. Try to think about what weaknesses, whatever you're walking into might have and try to address it. But then, then here's the tip, go on LinkedIn and you can fo- follow all those firms that you think would be a good place for you to work. Yeah. Then you're following them and see, and then you can get notifications when shit pops up. Mm-hmm. So there, there's, and, you know, jobs. When those pop up. Right. So that that's like a little bit of a pragmatic tip. If you're trying to find a job, 
You can also use a LinkedIn. There's a LinkedIn premium feature, I think, for finding work. I know there's one for recruiters, but I think there's one for finding work, too, that hmm. you can, like, almost like a leads list. Like, it'll save it up. You can put, all right, here's all the firms I want. Here's 50 of them I've tagged. I don't know if it's premium. I think uh, you yeah, can at least free? save jobs, I think, yeah, without okay. it being premium. But I'm saying uh, the, in the premium for the sales navigator, I can tag individuals or companies as leads and accounts, and then I can put them in groups, and I can have notifications when they're active, when this person says something online. Like, I want to talk to the, I'm going to message the people that are actively on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and not just on there once a year. Yeah. So there's stuff like that within the premium features that you can do. Anyway, it's something to look into. Hope this helps. Hope it helped, everybody. What about my sweat equity? Sweat equity pod.com. Sweat, 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 sweat equity. My sweat equity. Spotify, Apple Podcasts. My, my sweat equity. Google Play. Your neighbor's garage. Principal's loudspeakers. What about my sweat equity?